Yeah. So just you just stand behind the camera. You'll be in you'll be in the mirror anyways. Okay, and then so if you want this side you can go this side too. There's some mirrors over there. Maybe better over here. There's some mirrors there. So when we turn around it helps. We got the mirrors in the front. <coughs> so <coughs> we'll wait for Maria. <coughs> okay. Okay. So we got a slight bathroom delay. <laughs> Might as well announce it, right? Because they're going to say, what's going on? So, yeah, Maria, well, you can go over here then. And Nan can stand over here. Yeah. So we got the leader of the pack. Okay. All right. First exercise hands up. We're going to do a few waist turns. One, two, Three, 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 one, two, and stop. Okay, to the side. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and stop. Okay, hands up. Reach down. One, two, three. To your right. To your left. Center. Inhale. Exhale. Hands up. Reach down. One, two, three. To your right. To your left. Center, inhale, exhale. Okay, one more time, hands up. Reach down, stretch. One, two, three. To your right, to your left. Center, inhale, exhale. Okay, hands on your waist, circular movements. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Reverse. One, <coughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, one, two. Okay, cross. Hold your knees. Circular movements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, one, two. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Okay, hands on your waist. Neck turning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Back and forth. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and stop. Center tilt to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and stop. Center. A couple of two or three of these. 
is one, two, three. Go in the other direction. One, two, and stop. Okay, hands up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, spread your feet. Turn your shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, and stop. Okay, we're going to turn, stretch it out. We'll just, you know, do the best you can with these. Switch. Switch. And switch. Okay, switch, straighten the front knee. <coughs> switch. Switch. Switch again. <clears throat> okay, stretch in the center. If Okay, let's shake it out. Okay, deep breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, hands in your waist. Shoulder roll. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, one, two. Okay, center press. Relax, exhale, inhale.
arms up, deep breathing, inhale, up on your toes, and down, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, okay, wrists, circular movements, Take a circle. One, two, three. 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 One, two, and stop. Okay, shake it out. Okay, hands on your waist. We're going to go a little bit side to side. Shift your weight. Feet about shoulder width. Okay, then we're going to do a knee lift, so here, switch, okay, Santa, shake it out, okay, we're gonna Try to do the leg swing. Ready? Okay, let's switch to the other side. Santa, side to side. Okay, switch the other side. Check it out. Deep breathing again. Hands up. Inhale. 
exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay, still grilling, forward and back. Okay, go the other direction, switch sides. the arms, right foot forward, open and close, so this is just like the hand movements and the kicks. Okay, switch sides. Cross the arms, open, and close to the side and to the front. circular movements Elbows cupped, shoulders cupped forward. Okay, shoulder height.
elbows down. Up, deep breathing, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay, diagonal flying. Switch. Sana cloud hands. Down, lift up, carry tiger to the mountain.
Okay, Sana, infinity sign. Form the fist. together. Just drop the loot. So draw the ball. Okay, good. Step out, widen the stance, fan through the back.
Okay, good. Raise the hand. Arms down. Deep breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So we'll go to a short form. Uh, so just find a location or we got the mirrors there and so Manak says we do, haven't done this one we haven't done that one for a while okay okay under pressure okay so this is sink the elbow and relax the shoulders and we switch And so, okay. Deep breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. So let's go back to a couple of the drills that we did before. 90 degrees. Okay, before doing the form. All right, we pivot, square the feet. Then we're going to pivot. Go to this side, let's do the grass, the sparrow's tail. Forward, back, and forward. Turn all the way around. Get the right side, grass, the sparrow's tail. So this is just getting a bigger dose of the same postures over and over again. Grass, the sparrow's tail. build your continuity of movement. So this is where you kind of learn to exchange from one position to the next. And we actually did a this transition going just to vertical elbow, which is something that you have to build into your transition. And then we have forward, back, and forward. Now let's, this time let's turn. Let's do a brush knee. Go forward, round out, turn. So this is just like the brush knee and the obliques. It's a brush knee and push with a 180 degree turn. But typically we don't do it going this way. So this will build the mirror image to that drill or that specific motion. We would turn to the left and move to the right. Brush knee and push. Move to the right, turn to the right, turn to the left. So what does that do? When we go forward and twist toward the horizontal elbow, that winds up your waist. And then when you turn, the waist is wound up so you can unwind the waist. 
So what is that doing? It's twisting your back, and then you're turning, sustaining your back position, and then unwinding your spine and your waist. So well, let's shake that out. So when you turn, and you're conscious of turning, then you're going to work your lower back, the lumbar area, which it, it turns and it twists. So the muscles involved in the twisting actually become engaged. Now stretching increases range of motion, but range of motion doesn't happen if there isn't a cooperation between you know, the direction of movement and the muscle contractions and relaxation. So there has to be a balance. But winding your waist and unwinding your waist really helps you develop um, the mechanism to create that you know, integrated movement. Without the waist, you can't coordinate the upper and the lower body. The hands and the feet and the legs and the arms have to work together, tying in through your, you know, the thorax, the, your torso. So you have to move your torso in order to make that connection. So, so you're doing it, this is just sort of a dose of that kind of a motion. Now let's do it with Jade Lady Work Shuttle. So let's go to vertical elbow, turn to my left, right, and then I turn to my right. I go back to neutral, I s go to the opposite side, I go forward, I turn to my right, fold my elbows, and then lift to the left. I sit back, I bring this hand to lower hoop, I bring this hand to vertical, and I change the hands. I go forward as a horizontal. Now when you go forward, you turn a little bit to the right, then we go to vertical and turn to the left. We turn to the left, we sink down in, in the knees, so at the same time, we relax the elbows. And then we're going to go forward and then turn toward the right. Now, we're going to drop the elbow, turn, lower hand goes a lower hoop. This hand goes a vertical, so essentially goes the vertical horizontal. Then we swap sides, turn, go forward, push your back, lower hoop. Switch the hands to vertical and vertical. The right side, the forward hand goes to horizontal. And you turn toward your right. Then you sit back to vertical left. Sink in the legs and elbows and then come forward. That's your Jade Lady Work Shuttle. Turn. Turn to your right. Move to your left and then you're back. If you made your, if you clench your fist in this position, there's your beat the tiger. If we go to the opposite side, and we go forward and back. Here's your Jade Lady Work Shuttle. Clench your fist and there's your beat the tiger. Okay. When we turn, we face the front. The hands are like this. This goes down, this goes the vertical and you make that exchange. So you can see how important twisting and turning is involved. So because movements are dimensional, there's a lot of spatial uh, you know, directions that we do. So we have to build that kind of awareness. But the only way to get into those directions is to pivot your joints. It takes you across and around, and you constantly doing that type of an action. Now when we're standing there, we're just moving from one side to the other, and you say, well, you know, you know, when do you move your feet? We don't pick up our feet much. Because we don't pick up our feet much, we're always connected to ground, so your stability and your sensitivity is always there. You know, once you lift your foot, then where's the place you're going to put your foot down in your next step? That becomes part of that awareness than proprioception. When you walk, where do you go? The next step has to be here. It's not over there. It's not over there. And why? Because in order for me to step over there, I have to create another action. So the natural gait and the natural direction movement is actually in a forward direction. 
and in the forward direction it's not shoulder width it's actually closer to two or three inches apart where the center line is because the center line is the, what, what's tracking direction and if you walk along that line which is about maybe three inches between your feet the shifting of weight and the wobble is going to be eliminated because if it's wide you end up walking like this and the problem with that is when you step out too far then you out of your your central balance position and you end up kind of dumping your weight over there and you're kind of out of control so if you're walking forward and you're stepping like we do in the Tai Chi when you move we will turn like this in the form but that's just changing directions but then you still have to square up again and then move this so what what does how does that happen why does it happen is because we have to work our hips so the hip is something that we're actually maneuvering but it's not you know it's not a real physical movement it's it's actually it's a course of a natural action and when we start to just gently turn it becomes an action when you're up in the air because now you this is bearing weight and then when you turn it's a little bit harder to do because it's supporting weight but when you're turning like this and you're shifting and pivoting you know with just a, a piece of the weight then it's going to be not as you know stressful on your joint so when we turn it's really pretty effortless now when we do these type of turns when we're in this parallel stance and I do this and I go forward and back and I pivot back and then when I turn and I kick my heel out on the physical side when you first learn it you kick your heel out and you go like this and you go like this but if your body is working like we I just talked about as a unit if I turn my shoulders my heel will turn if I turn my shoulders my heel will turn so now you can see there's a direct connection between the shoulder through the body to the toe and now you're going to pivot like this so your body moves as a, as a function of something else so the pivoting becomes more passive than active it just becomes do an action and then when you sit here I can just get the side to turn it out or I can turn my shoulders and that evolves the hip and so forth so that's integration of body when you integrate your body you have passive active movement then you're not relying on one specific area more than the other it just happens you know as as this harmony of movement your major joints your, I call them the primary movers that they work together and the more they work together the less effort it takes so that's the concept and if you can you know take that as you know a thought and how's that it's information that everything you do should be trying to do that so so that's you know Tai Chi theory for today uh, so we'll, we'll go on we'll do the short form now all right ready preparation Here's your hand movements. Right and left is always throughout. Step up, <coughs> grasp the sparrow's tail. Single whip, turn toward the front. This is your foot pivoting. Step out, open, palm in, hold the ball shift diagonal flying shift take a small step forward down reset the vertical step up and lift bend from the waist stalk flaps wings and return here's your toe heel pivot brush knee four times
to left, turn to your right, and back to left center for Shrum the Loot, and step up to close the door. Form the fist, step up with your left, then punch. Infinity sign, divert, lock, and punch. Cross the arms, leopard and tiger springs to mountain. Neutral position, turn. Fold the elbow, fist on the elbow. Going backwards, repulse the monkey. Three times. And here's an, an instance when we go forward on the left and we turn our shoulders, the rear foot spins by itself. The neutral, hold the ball, that's the right side. Step up to diagonal flying. Sit back over the supporting leg, insert the needle. Step forward to the fan through the back position. Turn, parry and punch, vertical, the back fist. Step forward, form the fist, and punch. Infinity sign, one, two, three. Cross the arms, leopard and tiger springs the mountain. Bring it down, turn, carry tiger to the mountain. So we go up, turn to the back, cross the arms, raise your left hand, bend from the waist, stalk flaps wings. And we turn, put the mirrors in the side, left side grasp the sparrow's tail. Left side hook wrist, open, hold the ball, flip it over, diagonal flying. Sit back, stroke down, pot the horse's mane. Go out, step up, go to vertical, neutral, stroke down, hold the ball, Part the horse's mane. Going back, cross the corner, one, two, Jade Lady Work Shuttle. We just work this arm drill. We're going to cross over, sit back first, unweight. Now we step across and we do Jade Lady Work Shuttle right side. We hook the wrist and turn toward the front. Left hand goes down, begin the cloud hands, one, that's one set, second set, get back to the right corner, hook your wrist, hold the ball, flip it over, diagonal flying, out to the side, One, two, three. Okay, so that was good. Deep breathing. Okay, good. So, how do you feel? Okay, right? Going through the, with the group is, is good. Yeah. That, it's, uh, it's not a significant difference. It's, uh, it's more on the on a application side and, and, uh, and maybe a slight difference in how you would uh, lead the movement. So in part the host main, it, it opens and it's a little bit more using the back and it's turning like this and you're looking down here. Diagonal flying is a little bit more angular. But 
you know, some of the newer forms have eliminated the diagonal flying. But, you know, in a Wu style, we have that, and it's a little, you know, in fact, a slant diagonally sometimes goes back this way. So you actually go backwards like this. So it's not a, it's not, you know, a, a big, big difference. So when we do silk reeling, or diagonal flying as a drill, you essentially, you stop here in diagonal flying, part the horse's mane, kind of, or silk reeling goes through it. And I call this diagonal flying with a lift. And then when you stroke down, if you do part the horse's mane, it's a little bit more curved. But, yeah. But, you know, I think part of the lead in this, if you were to define it, when you do the form, single whip goes to diagonal flying. Part the horse's mane usually ties together with Jade Lady Work Shuttle. So, the 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 posture before it or after it kind of determines how they tie together. Just like fan to the back, insert needle, they kind of, uh, or parry and punch, they kind of group together, you know, in most of the forms as a, as a sequential event. So, so you know that the part the horse's mane will happen near the end and then the diagonal flyings. Yeah. And like I said, usually the if you notice in Jade Lady Work Shot on the long form, which we're going to do, it, we have a part the horse's mane here. And then when we cross over to Jade Lady Work Shot and then turn, when we get to the right corner, we would either do a, a follow with Grass the Sparrow's Tail or a part the horse's mane. And then the modern form, or the 45 movement Tai Chi form, we have two part the horse's mane. And then we do Jade Lady Work Shuttle, but we cre we s initiate, instead of doing the horizontal elbow, a part the horse's mane can become part of the Jade Lady Work Shuttle. You see, so it, it's really um, the, the rounding, the position in this. Is, it, it's not, you know, it doesn't make a, a tremendous amount of difference when you're just running through form. But in application, it does make a difference because this one is elbow down, this one is more horizontal. So between horizontal and elbow down, so if you just take geometry of position and then use that as your guideline, one's more angular, one's rounder, one's more oblique, and that's kind of sets you up for a scenario of what that movement would be doing more than anything. So. Okay, so let's go through the long form. All right, ready? Preparation. Step up. Press forward. Turn. Slant diagonally here, right? Step up. Grasp the sparrow's tail. And we're building the circular motion. Hook your wrist. Single whip. Hold the ball, shift, diagonal flying, shift, step up, press forward, raise the hand, bend from the waist, stalk flaps wings, and brush knee four times. Go to the left. This is your third brush knee. Okay, strong the loot. Step up and close the door. Form the fist and punch. Divert, block, and punch. Cross the arms, leopard and tiger springs to mountain. 
bring the hands down, carry tiger to the mountain, lift up, palms up, face the front, cross the forearms, and we're going to turn to the corner, oblique brush knee push. And this is just like that drill, we're going to go to the forward position on the left, turn to your left, wind it up, pivot, and then go to the back corner, brush knee and push. Then we go to the right side for grass the sparrow's tail. Next, hook your wrists, oblique single whip. That's in the corner, we pivot, get all the way around, follow Nan, stroke out, fist on the elbow, and we're ready to repulse the monkey three times. Left side back, and forward, so it's done three times. And then the third one on the left again, so we've got to go one more time, stepping backwards, retreat and repulse the monkey. Vertical, right side, right, go down, lower hoop, turn, carry tiger to the mountain with the cross leg open, hold the ball, shift, diagonal flying, move in, step out, Press forward, lift the back, raise the hand, then from the waist, stalk flaps wings. Turn. Turn, brush knee one time, insert needle. Step forward, fan to the back. Turn, stroke down, parry and punch. Step backwards to retreat, divert, lock, and punch. Step forward, grasp the sparrow's tail. Turn. Hook your wrist. First set of cloud hands. Hold the ball. Shift your weight. Diagonal flying. Or setting up the cloud hands anyways. And here's your first two. Second two. And third two. Left and right. Back to single whip. Okay, turning to your left, pivoting. First in step kick, that's high pat the horse. Right toe kick. Set it up, cross the arms, high pat the horse, flip it over, left toe kick. Turn. Cross the arms, fold, left heel kick. Then we're going to the brush knee on the right side. Sit back, toe out, step up, step through. Brush knee, left push. Back to the right side, we're going to do that again. Step through. Stepping up, planting punch. And then the second punch is on the other side, it's the parry and punch. Then we step up just like the first set of kicks. High pat the horse, cross the arm, toe out, face the corner, open, cross behind, go to vertical left, and then vertical right with the palm up, turn, just like the Jade Lady drill that we did, stroke down, Turn to the back, fold the elbow, go forward, clench the fist, that's done. Turn to the front, follow Nan, lower hoop, cross arms, right heel kick, two punches to the ear, 
put the left hand on top, flip it over, fold, open. That's a potting leg, cross, turn, left hand on top, fold, potting leg, and back to parry and punch. Form the fist, step up, and punch. Divert, lock and punch, so we're just repeating the sequence. Cross the arms, leopard and tiger springs to mountain. Carry tiger to the mountain again. Pivot back to the front, cross the arms, obliques again. So we go to the corners. Going forward left, twist your waist to the left so you wind it up, unwind it as you go around and push. Right side, grasp the sparrow's tail, back to single whip. So you know, it always follows, grasp the sparrow's tail, single whip. So once we're here, hold the ball, we're going to reverse, diagonal flying on the right, then we turn Hot the horse's mane five times. Second time. And then we have to step up to do one on the left. Okay, good. Now we step up again. Last two on the right side. And Jade Lady work shadow to the corners. We're going to do four of them. Forward, left, turn to the right, turn to your left. This is the hand movement. Now we sit back and let's do that lower hoop, pivot all the way around, go to vertical, go to your right side, forward, vertical, turning to your left, and then back up. Here's where we do an additional pot the horse is made. Now we cross corner and do it again on the left, one, vertical, sink your elbow and knees, and turn. Sit back, round out the lower hand, transition all the way across, merging the elbows in vertical position, fold the elbow, jade lay work shuttle, grasp the sparrow's tail, this is how we get back into single whip. Hook your wrist, and we have the second set of cloud hands coming. So we hear one, two, three. Hook your wrist single whip. Okay, now we're going to turn downward posture. Snake sticks out tongue, invert the hands, do a little bit of a pull down, go up, cross the arms, stand on one leg, knee up, toe kick, knee up. Now here's the second set of repulse monkeys. Left side first, and we're going forward again, backwards, forward, left side going back, reverse the stance. Okay, that's finished. Neutral position, lower hoop, turn, lift, open the stance, and we're here. Ready? Hold the ball. Shift, here's your diagonal, step up, press forward, step up, lift and raise the hand, bend from the waist, stalk flaps wings, and we turn. Brush knee, to insert needle. Fan to the back. 
turn stroke down parry and punch step forward punch divert block and punch step up grasp the sparrow's tail forward backward roll back and push forward hook your wrist single whip third set of cloud hands okay second grouping of movements and we're on the third set of hand movements one two three hook your wrist single whip we're going to pivot now we'll go to the last section this is setting up for the palm strikes face turn your shoulders and turn the single lotus kick or slap brush knee left side push go forward planting punch or punch down the crotch step up grasp the sparrow's tail one more time and this is taking us a single whip then the second downward posture so we turn cover hand snake takes out tongue invert the hand flip it back over pull down lift up to cross hand seven star retreat ride the tiger left palm strikes face turn double lotus draw bow to shoot tiger bring the hand down so this is that lower hoop and vertical dragon this is actually palm strikes face parry and punch stepping forward set it up high pat the horse Okay, step up again, grasp the sparrow's tail to single whip and close the form. And here you go. So that's it. Deep breathing. So, you know, it is pretty amazing that we are able to store all that information, that sequence in the brain. But, you know, I, I say we're, we're creatures of habit. So when we learn these movements, because we do it over and over again, that's all we're doing is really creating habits. You know, like any other movement that we do, it becomes a habit, it becomes innate, it becomes something that happens uh, just as a course of, you know, of your learning. But it's much more, you know, complicated and complex than people can imagine. I mean you know, your physicians, your doctors that know you do Tai Chi, they have no idea what you go through to learn this. They have no idea, you know, if they came to class, they're just fascinated. I know when we applied for the, the even the Parkinson's grant, and the neurologist came to watch. They watched, and they didn't ho have a whole lot to, to you know, talk about afterwards, because they had no idea what they just saw. <laughs> But the thing is, um, you know, it's just the, the way it is. You know, this is how we learn. And there, there are, you know, things that you learn in Tai Chi that you never think about typically. You know, your awareness of how we move and awareness of <coughs> how we learn <coughs> is really, is really um, you know, beyond the average person's comprehension. Mainly because movement is something that's beyond just thinking. You, know, you have to actually program your body to do this. But we don't think of 
doing things, I'm learning um, the things that we take for granted as a training, you know. Just anything you do from the from the day you start to move and learn it somewhat organized is something that you go through life doing. And most of it you pick up visually, you know. Everything that we do from using a fork to a knife to even putting butter on a piece of bread, we just know how to do that. But, you know, the first time you did that and the butter was too hot and you kind of ripped the bread and, it's, you know, whatever. It's a sensitivity thing. You get a feeling. Um, you get spotty enough to realize that the butter should be soft. <laughs> and, you know, so it's just everything that we do, you know, stirring a drink, mixing, cooking, all the things that we do that that requires some kind of skill becomes, you know, something to you learn. Like if you try to make dumplings, you ever watch them make dumplings, we got it, whether it's uh, tortellinis, uh, tortellinis and wontons are actually wrapped the same way, <laughs> you know, so you, know, you roll it up and you fold them and it, you come up with these little shapes. And people do dumplings, they have very nimble fingers and they squeeze the little edges if you make pies. It takes a lot of skill to do that. Consistency, you know, make, makes a difference. You go to a, a bakery and see all their cookies and so forth. They all look about the same size, they all look alike and, you know, so that, that's a skill. When you first try to do it, it comes out to kind of all different sizes and, you know, they don't look, you know, as pretty as they should be, you know, but so you know so what we're doing is just teaching our body uh how to build that so so the actually I saw this ad in uh, on t v it's called relief factor it's it's uh, the people that take it swear by it, so if you have like pain, they said, well, after taking relief factor, all my pain went away, but I don't know what works it's nineteen ninety five a bottle, and this this uh, father and son produce it, I guess. So you can look it up, relief factor. So while we think of that term relief factor, we have here, I call it the control factor. We have to control our movements. The relief factor, you know, is something else. But So we, we actually learn through coordination and movement to improve our circulation. So improved circulation is a tremendous benefit because that's the only reason why we have circulation is to bring oxygen and nutrients to the cells. So, but you know, I talk about that kind of stuff, you know, like the mitochondria. Now they're doing, I guess there's more research, like even David, that, uh, that yes, David Sinclair, he talks about stuff like that. M mitochondria, um, you know, mitochondria is the power plant in the cell, how it has to produce certain things. And they, and e they all have their own task, you know, whether it's producing a chemical in the body or whatever it is, it's, it's all uh, doing that. So, but it's tied to your circulation and movement and yeah, whatever it's your DNA, everything is all kind of tied together. So it's kind of interesting. I, I looked at mitochondria ma mainly for, um, for producing energy for movement. But, you know, it, that's just one side of it, you know. Because um, I was fascinated as a, as a young martial artist. How do we create power? How do we create speed and accuracy? Of, and it's through movement and consistency. So speed and action comes from doing it over and over again. And then understanding what you're trying to do. But then that's just the motor skill side of it, how does that happen internally? Because, you know, you see these movies and they say, oh, these martial artists, they become superhuman. They can do this, they can do that, and all these things. It's not, you know, it's kind of a, uh, it's not realistic to actually fly and so forth, but in the movies you can see that they try to do, to show that, that that's how extreme it can be. And all the old storybooks about the famous martial artists, the legends, they're all about these, you know, these kind of mystical heroes. But, you know, it's it's just the human ability. You train and you can develop 
um, feats of strength that you, you know, didn't know you could do. But training back in the day was kind of, you know, hit or miss. Training has become a science today because they know the human body, uh, the way it the way it works. Um, you can, you know, put wear and tear on your body by overdoing it too. You can damage your body trying to do some of these things. You know how many super athletes hurt themselves trying to get to that, and then after you don't make it, it just goes down too because your body has been uh, almost destroyed. You know, see so, you know, some of the bodybuilders that you've heard that they blow their muscles blow up. You've heard of that? Yeah, yeah. So it's you know people go to these extremes. Yep. Uh, what was it? Oh, the f f oh, the oh, oh, the modern forty-five. It's the f it's the forty-five movement Wu style Tai Chi. It's uh, it's a competition form. So, um, every family system has a competition form, and I was teaching it last night as a you know, and we just had a little discussion. But those competition forms were developed you know, as a modern uh, take on it. And the people that, it was a board of, you know, uh, teachers that took the essence of each style and created a form. And they're all about five minutes. So, and five minutes, it's kind of coincidental. You know, the Tai Chi Barenheim, I developed it. it was, it's a coincidence that it's five minutes too. But the thing is, um, they did it because, you know, when they have competitions, it's kind of a compulsory form. So the sequence is there and everybody does the same sequence, so then you can kind of you know, judge them on that with execution, timing, and so forth. Now they also have now what they call the open circuit, which is what kind of mimicking like gymnastics and uh, you know freestyle. And that becomes, you create your own. But that's not looking for just the consistency of the compulsory movements. It's looking for s the movements with extra stuff, like uh, difficult movements, uh, you know, going into these different positions. And then they have these jumps. So what, what the modern styles had done, have done to create the difficulty of movement is uh, like gymnastics or figure skating. They added spins, rotations, and, you know, going beyond, the, you know, what you need. Uh, no, uh, no, it's still um, taking the basic uh, ones in Tai Chi, maybe, uh, it, it's it's not all of them. Like we would have seven or nine kicks in the long form. They still would only have one or two. And then they would have, you know, they would have the same postures, but s s grouped together. And because there's left and right sides, a 45 minute, a 45 movement form might be still only about 16 or 18 movements. Posture. Uh, it's the number of, of movements in the form. Like 108 is 100. So 45 would be that. So they have a 45 form. There's a 30, there's 36, there's 32 movement forms. There's actually um, forms that they call 16 movement forms. Because as, as people, when they tried to make Tai Chi more popular, they realized how difficult it is to teach. So peop a lot of teachers kept dumbing it down, dumbing it down to five movements, four minutes, ten movements, anything to try to get people to do it, you know. So, but if you make it too short, it's not good. It's good for drills. It's not good because if you're going to do it as a meditative exercise, you have to be in the zone for a period of time. You can't just do, a, you can't meditate for one minute. You have to do it for, you know, five, ten, fifteen. Minutes. So the long form is the most meditative because it takes 15 to 17 minutes to do once you've kind of uh, you know, uh, embodied it. So a lot of people that do Tai Chi for health would learn that form and that's all they would do every day, just go through the form. And that would be their exercise. But that's an exercise. You, if you want to perfect it, you, it's the 15 minute form, but then you have to spend some additional time, you know, like homework. Do, trying to improve those movements and understand it.
but that's you know more of a you know you know you, as you as you progress it becomes you know you're more serious about it so so any yeah the 40 by movement form I teach that on Wednesday nights uh, so we do we do the 24 movement form which is a compulsory form developed uh, maybe maybe in the early 30s and 40s and it survived it to now it's still it, it's called the 24 movement simplified Tai Chi form it's a yang style form and it has uh, essentially the the grass the sparrow's tail the part the horse's mane brush knee repulse the monkey insert needle fan to the back parry and punch you know it has the the main movements Jade Lady Work Shuttle. Those are all the ones that you know. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of a universal form. It was, you know, before they came out with the modern forms, 24 was the one everybody did. In fact, 24 movement is what they do uh, outside. It's done in a lot of the, it's done in all the phys ed classes in the universities in China because it's part of their phys ed. So, so, uh, College students learn it. Then it's in the hospitals, and then then they, uh, as one of the exercises that they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, twelve is a kind of a significant number. So, so actually, the camera's on. So you, they just got a good glimpse of your eyeball <laughs> so actually uh, oh no actually well it's pretty close to the end end of the class but anyways uh, you know Barkley and Narco came to try to see if they uh, you know just coming back they got their two shots so a lot of people they got their two shots are thinking of coming back so you get these guys they're great you know they, they yeah what's that you had your two shots, your two shots. Uh, yeah, I got one. Yeah, I uh, tenth, tenth, uh, April, April tenth, I get my second one, and then you haven't got it, right? You got it on Sunday. Okay, so he's okay. Okay, so after everyone gets their second shot, we should have our third shot. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, cool. I know, I know. Uh, David has uh, his uh, his favorite drinks. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Billy. A muddy, muddy. Is it? Isn't that? Oh no, I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking of the sombrero. <laughs> yeah. Mochi, those are the little mushy things. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's got like a rice uh, uh, dough on the outside. Yeah, sticky. Yeah. Then, uh, oh, you like them sweeter? Oh. 
<laughs> yeah. So do you cook? I do cook, yeah. No, no. <laughs> she's a gr she, great cook and then, uh, you know, and uh, but you bake bread as as a as a breadwinner. <laughs> okay, so it was good seeing you. Good seeing you. You did great. You should do it all the time. <laughs> you can. You see, it was simple. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Monday. Next week. Okay, look up that relief factor. Just look up relief factor, relief factor. Yeah, relief. It's that. It, it's that. Uh, whatever it is, that people are taking it with a lot of pain. And um, you can look it up online. Yeah, but this is this is something else. It was developed by uh, um, this. Uh, son and dad and the people that they swear by it so you can just look into it see what it is it might have some other relief factor it's great yeah it's relief factor and it's sold uh, I think it's online and you they mail it to you uh, you can look at it and I mean 